In today's YouTube video, I'm going to break down a new little way to defend trips tight end. Really a simple defense, honestly, but it's a concept out of the 335 uh, wide defense. This is actually something that I believe that a, a concept that you'll see a lot of college teams use against formations like trips tight end, uh, formations, uh, formations like trips in general. And so excited to break this down for us in this video. Now, if you're new to the channel, I do want to ask you to go ahead and to click the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel, and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest uh, tips and strategies that we release every single day here on the YouTube channel. I also wanted to let you know about our Patreon membership. I actually put, uh, or I'm working on right now, a major overhaul uh, or a major, major defensive update uh, for you guys on specifically the 335 wide and part of the reason why is primarily because it's the only formation in the game that you can actually create some of these coverages from and that is why I'm choosing that formation I'd actually much rather run the nickel triple because of the pressure that you can create I think it's significantly better than 335 wide in that regard but 335 wide is the only formation in the game that you can create some of these concepts from which is why I wanted to teach it out of 335 wide, and I'm trying to find a way to do it out of nickel triple. We're also working on uh, a couple of new defenses on the way as well, which I'm really excited about. So if you want to get access to it, the cool part is with the Patreon, it's only $10 a month, and you get access to everything. You get access to every ebook, every update to every ebook, every um, new ebook while your membership is active. And we typically update the Patreon probably three to four times a week. I think this week alone, we updated it four or five times. So if you want to get all that stuff um, and all that content, all that help uh, to get better at this game and all those breakdowns, I would encourage you to sign up for it. It's only $10 a month, and you can cancel it whenever you would like to or whenever it doesn't work for you any longer. All right, guys. So um, audibles. We want Tampa 2 in our audibles from 335 wide, Mike Blitz 3, Cover 4 Show 2, and Mike Blitz 0. These are our four main audibles. Today we're going to be primarily focusing on Tampa 2 coverage and how we can craft a really, really interesting adjustment um, that is going to help us defend formations like Gun Trey or Trips Tight End in particular. Um, so we're going to come out and pee a counter go. And basically what we're going to audible to is Tampa 2. Now, from an adjustments perspective, I want you to take a look real quick at what we have. Now, we know that we want to stand kind of right in here to be able to stop the runs. So like if they run the ball, uh, we want to be kind of right in here and you can kind of shoot in that gap. Especially if, especially if you crash your line out. So like here I crash my line out, I'm going to run inside zone, and what you'll see is I can kind of shoot in there. Okay? Um, so that's how you stop the run. And the other thing that I want to quickly point out is you can actually blitz your user um, and then drop some coverage. So we can drop something like this, if you will. And for the most part, we should be able to hang, whoops, sorry. We should be able to hang within Z zone. Um, and again, it's a little bit it's a little bit more difficult when you're dropping coverage to stop the run. But as long as you have these three guys blitzing, you should be definitely fine. Um, but even in a situation where this guy's in a bluff blitz, you don't want to spread your line. You want to crash them up, but you don't want to spread them, in my opinion. And what you should see here inside zone is it's, it's not always going to completely stop it. Um, but for the most part, you're going to be fine. So again. And if you want to spread, if you want to try spreading your line, go for it. If you want to try spreading your line, go for it. But you're coming right in here, and you see how see how just the formation itself typically will hang with the run for the most part. Okay, um, let me show it one more time. And I, like I said, I like to keep. I actually really like to do this, and then you're just gonna kind of. I mean, you can sit here, and you can also sit kind of right in here, and get off the block and get in there okay and again you notice that it's much better when you blitz three but anyways okay so if they're running on us all the time just just blitz three like just just do this and you're you're in the backfield and again my shoot's a little messed up but you basically stand a little bit to the right now the other thing that you could do from this from a run perspective you know is you could stand right here and just try to shoot in and kind of muddy it up and honestly that will hang you'll stop it eventually. I mean, it, they're not going to be able to run the ball consistently on 3 5 wide. It's just the way the formation's built. It's not really designed for people to be able to just run on it all, all game long. And if you want to sit, like, right, the more you sit over here, the more that less likely that guard is to, to, to pick you up, okay? Um, but anyways, so let's take a look at coverage. 
Now, one of the things we need to understand about how this uh, formation is, is built, it's really built off of one of the primary route concepts is either is, is one of two things. It's either this here, whoops, that is one of them. This is another one of them. Whoops, like, like uh, whoops, like that. Okay, that's that's two, and then the third one is um, is this. Okay, so those are your primary route combinations. So, how do we deal with it? Well, not actually that terribly difficult. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, and I've talked about this adjustment before, we're going to put this backside safety on an inside quarter. Now, what you're going to notice is that that backside safety, when he is on an inside quarter, if they run PA counter go, I just want you to watch the number three receiver. He basically is in, um, I'm going to butcher the language on this, but I, I, uh, I want to say he's. It, it turns him into stubby rules, but essentially he plays the poach rule. Um, in a trip set, which essentially means he's going to relate to number three. And if number three goes vertical, that dude is going to bag the crap out of him. Um, so what you saw there, the crosser. Now I'll show you the corner route. So if they run a corner route here, you'll see he's going to go over, basically runs the route for the guy, and it's right into a cloud flat. So that one adjustment can help significantly against trips that in. The number three receiver goes vertical, that dude's going to go guard. Okay? So it, it's it's almost like he's cross-manned, but in, in a better better light. Okay? So that's P, that's P say, or part A. Now the next part is how do we deal with the, um, you know, how do we deal with the in route and the flap? Well, we've got these guys right here. Okay? Um, these two linebackers are linebackers that we can put into coverage. So what we can do is we can, um, we're gonna press, crash our line out, and then what I like to do typically, if they're, I mean, if they're running a lot, just shift your line this way. And honestly, like that typically is the easier way to stop it. You saw I was able to get through, I just messed up my, my lurk, but I'm, easy, I'm able to get through and, and muddy that up, okay? So let's say for example that you know, that's what they do. So so now what this allows us to do is it allows us to put this guy in a three rack hook zone a lot easier than it was before. We also have this quarter zone, and then now we're really concerning ourselves now primarily with the tight end route. Now, what are the routes the tight end is going to run? He's either going to run a clear out route like a streak or a deep corner or a short corner or a, or a tight end post, tight end apprentice post, tight end apprentice corner, tight end apprentice post. Which both what I would call what I when I say short corner just means a, a stock cloud can cover it. Okay? Just like a stock cloud can cover the post to the tight end. So I'll show you what I mean. So if they run this, watch the tight end, you'll see here he runs right into the coverage. Okay? So that's that's you know one of the reasons why I really like this coverage. So here's how I like to defend trips tight end. It's really simple, honestly. Um Camp of two, we're going to press, we're going to shift our line to the right, crash it up, we're going to bluff blitz this backside guy, and then we're going to actually take a lot of advantage, uh, or take advantage of our uh, ability to utilize uh, our guys here. So um, you don't have to, honestly, I mean, you can put, it's kind of tricky, um, I, will, I will like both vert hooks. I think they're helpful, okay? So you can just leave them. Um, you could shade them down if you want to, but basically put both linebackers in a vert hook. I like to shade down and then re-cloud and then man up the slot with the quarter. If you want to, you can take this backside guy and man him up with a tight end just in case he's in a pull route situation. Um but I find this to be a pretty decent adjustment. The biggest thing you've got to do is your primary role in the defense is to get back for either a tight end streak or a deep skinny post to the, to the number one. So you'll see here, I'm just going to get back, get back, get back, get back, get back, and everything else pretty much backed.
okay? Um, that's one way to defend it. A little bit of a safer way to defend it where you're not so dependent on the, on the user to get back on the defense. You want an inside quarter. I still really like to man this guy up on that receiver right there. And then what we're gonna, what we're actually gonna roll with here, is we can take this deep half zone. And if you think about what role this deep half plays, it really doesn't do a whole lot. So we're gonna man him up onto the number one receiver. Now this does leave a void right here where your number three can get open, which is why we want to have a zone like a vertical hook. So you see now we've got two vert hooks. We've got a lot of stuff, a lot of action over there. And then you could take this backside vert hook and just man that tight end up. Now you got to be a little bit more helping on a slant pattern than you normally would. But if you see here, if I, if I were to just streak this guy, I've got a shot, but that guy's coming right over to rob it. So it's not like, you know, it's not super, super likely. Um, the other thing that you could do from this, because you, the problem is you don't want the fade and the flat to kill you. Like the, what I wish you could do with this is I wish that this man adjustment, then I could put a soft squat here and he would hang with him if he went vertical. But the problem is he doesn't. Well, you see how he drops down and then I can throw that to the outside. So the number one receiver really is the receiver that you have to think about how you're going to defend him. Um, I really like manning him up with this guy why because he's got inside leverage on a post route and then let's say he runs a fade that's a really hard throw that's a really it's a really not it not open it's not open but then you again you're tied in streak you know so there's a lot of i mean trip side is tough but it's really i mean it's it's you can go quarter here because you have to worry a little bit about the back i like to keep these coverages right here if i possible if at all possible so what you can also do off of this is just take this backside linebacker here. You can say, this guy's in a three wreck, so I don't have to have a vert hook over here. I'll just man him up on the tight end, and then I've got man coverage on the number one. So you see, this is what the coverage looks like. And this is pretty good. Um, it's pretty good for what they're going to do, how they're going to run. The skinny post stuff and the slant is one of the key concepts out of this. You see there. It plays it really well. It plays it really, really well. And they basically have to check down a ton. <laughs> They're going to have to check down a ton. And then again, like I said, if you don't want a vert hook on the left side, you don't have to have it. Um, it but you do have to then worry a little bit about the in route to the number one receiver. But, I mean, again, he's, he's manned up, right? He's manned up. So the deep dig route that is so good, you don't have to, you don't have to kill yourself to defend it. And then if you want to just say, well, I know my work, right? So I can help on this slant until it gets to the cloud. So then I can take the vert hook, have a little bit more freedom here, and now I can have a vert hook and a three wreck on this backside, which are going to help early on on slant and late on the tight end post. So you could do something like that. It's a little bit easier of an adjustment. And then, um, you know, you still have your, you still have kind of the foundation build of your coverage. And as you can see here, you're just kind of helping right in here, but that's not open. I mean, that's not open at all. So, and this helps you with, um, this helps you significantly with, with a tight end apprentice corner. Why? Because you have your cloud over there. So again, we're just going to uh, shift our line or press, shift our line to the left, bluff blitz this D end after we crash our line out, blitz our user, of course, uh, inside quarter there, man up number one, uh, man up. Uh, man up number one, and then man up number two, and then we're kind of doing a little box and one coverage off the tight end essentially is what we're doing. And then what you'll see here is number three and number, the number three of the trips and the tight end backside, we really have kind of a decent little way of defending it. And then lastly, what you're going to notice here, like I said, if it, let's say they run, um, you know, some type of verts action on you. What you'll see here is that this cloud and the man coverage make that a really hard throw. So this is a way that you can kind of balance and, and hang with a lot of what trips tight end is going to try to do to you. If you don't want to do so many adjustments, maybe you're watching this video and you say, I like this, but I don't want to do, all, I don't want to do all, the, all those adjustments. Go to um, what, you can, what you can do is go to cover two, 
and then very simple just um, inside quarter that guy right there and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the blitzing linebacker and man him up on that guy as you can see and then we um, and then we bluff blitz so we got the tight end cross man we've got an inside quarter here and then yes they will have the flat open and they'll have the skinny post open so if you get a concept that looks like this you've got to know your job and your job is to get back in here uh, to help on that late to help on that late but that's a real good defense for trips um, a little bit more of an advanced and a little bit more of a beginner if you really want a simple defense for trips go to Mike Blitz 3 because you have these um, you have these zones here which are cover three zones and the reason why they're advantageous is because you have swing, you know, you used to have swing defenders and you have a third. So what you can easily do off of this is essentially, um, you know, essentially what you could do here is you could go inside quarter there. Uh, I could go man coverage on the tight end here, and then I could go two purples here. So you see, it looks kind of like this. This is a pretty good coverage, and you still you still blitzing too. It's a little easier to set up as well. Um, and it's really good for this concept because you have a man coverage guy going here. You're kind of poaching in here. And as you can see, it's a really good defense for that. So very little, very unique little coverage. It primarily works for trip side in. One thing I want to say real, real, real quick at the tail end of the video, the concept that I showed you at the very beginning with that, with that inside quarter, I've talked about that a ton this year. I just want to take one quick second and I want to show you this real quick. So let's say, for example, that they are in um, tray open. It's a great example. So let's say, for example, they're in this tray open. I want to show you something real quick. We're going to run the exact same. Um, we're going to run the exact same uh, concept. Let me move the ball over here just to give us a little bit more room. Um, this is a principle. Okay. Again, you got to understand. Sometimes Madden teaches you play formation specific stuff and sometimes it's concept uh, conceptual stuff so let's say for example we run the same exact route combination that we just ran which is basically this it's just this guy's now outside not inside i want you to watch the safety the safety on the left so we're inside quartering him and i want you to watch what he does snap of the ball look what he does he lurks number three okay so i just wanted to say that's a concept that you can apply to any trips any trips he will lurk number three even compression trips like bunch and bunch tight end, he still lurks number three. The problem is those sets don't typically run number three on a crossing route. They normally run number two on a crossing route. So anyways, guys, thanks for hanging with me. I really hope that this was informative and helpful. Um, this is trips tight end. Um, some defense for you out of 335 wide in Tampa 2. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about it, we go a lot more in depth on the Patreon. I've got so much content in there on defending things like bunch of trips that uh, it will probably, I mean, you, it will significantly help you get better. We got 18 offensive and defensive guides there. As soon as you sign up, you get all of them and you get all the updates and any new stuff while your membership's active, all for $10. So you get a lot of stuff that's going to help you become a better Madden player. So if you're looking to get better at the game, join the Patreon. There's a link in the description below. And again, you can sign up today for just 10 bucks.